Hi everyone, it's Rax and welcome to the complete Witch Doctor set dungeon guide. We're going to go over all of the builds, Arashir, Helltooth, Zunimasa, and of course Jade, and show you exactly how to get them down. It'll be kind of fun because they all have a slightly different objectives, so we'll be doing different things in order to accomplish them, but let's get right into it so you can get your Wings of Mastery. Let's start with the Arashir set dungeon, which to me was the easiest one. And the name of the game here is Patience. We're only going to use one attack with Piranhas and our Toad of Hugeness. And we're just going to very calmly walk through the set dungeon because it's very small and there aren't very many enemies compared to the other set dungeons. So take this one easy and it should be a piece of cake. The first objective, we get the Toad of Hugeness on the Hex Rune for free on the four piece. And we have to lick 30 enemies with that toad. Now, believe me, there are not very many enemies in this set dungeon. So you pretty much have to lick like half of the enemies. So we're going to go nice and slow and have it lick everybody. The other thing is we need to kill every single elite while it's webbed by our spider queen, which we get in the two piece and also with piranhas. So very simply to make sure that we absolutely cannot mess this up. The only damaging skill I take is Piranhas. So if you want to take other damaging skills and do it a slightly different way and complete it a little bit faster, you're more than welcome to. But I'm going to show you a super easy way that's like almost impossible to fail. So with Arashir, of course, we have to take the entire set dungeon. So we'll take the helmet, the shoulders, the gloves, the chest, the pants with Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube. We'll complete our set. The two piece gives us that gives us that spider queen that we need. She leaves behind webs that deal weapon damage. We need those webs to be hitting an elite along with our piranhas. So the Spider Queen herself is doing 4,000% damage and the piranhas do 400% weapon damage. What that means is if you do too much damage, you're not going to get them both on the elites and you're going to lose. So you're going to notice throughout the entire build, I've kind of nerfed my damage. I don't take the crit crit on the gloves. I don't have an emerald in my weapon, things like that. I purposely tone down my damage. So I have about 260,000 damage and I did not take any of the really any damaging passives. So don't go in there with 2000 Paragon and full Augs and the full Arashir set and just blast this. That's not going to work. Tone down your damage, and we're going to go nice and easy so the Spider Queen and the Piranhas can both be hitting the Elites before they die. So, the four-piece Hex, we get the Toad of Hugeness rune, and after summoning the Toad of Hugeness, we get 50% damage reduction, and we heal for 10% of our life per second for 15 seconds. That's great. And the six-piece, the damage of your creatures is increased by 17,000%. So... You already heard the trick. We don't want a ton of damage, so we'll tone it down a little bit. Like every other set dungeon, we just want cooldown reduction and resource costs so we can spam all of our abilities at will. For that reason, we'll take Ingeom to reset our cooldowns when we kill an elite. Shukrani's Triumph Spirit Walk lasts until you attack or until an enemy is within 30 yards of you. This is gonna let you move from section to section very quickly. We will craft Captain Crimson's boots and belt at the blacksmith. This is going to give us a lot of cooldown reduction and resource cost reduction. Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac is nice for resetting our cooldowns. We'll take Bane of the Trapped for more damage. Stone of Jordan is nice to have, but it's not a need. Um, it's just for a little bit more damage, especially on the elites. And I like Molten Wildebeest here for the extra shields. If you don't want to use Molten Wildebeest, you could use Esoteric to survive easier. And finally, for the amulet, I like Flavor of Time. You can use whatever you want, but Flavor has four stats, and it always rolls with cooldown. makes it really easy. And we'll take the Gogok of Swiftness for the extra cooldown. Lakumba's Ornament reduce all damage by 6% for every stack of Soul Harvest that we have. We're going to have lots of stacks of Soul Harvest, so we'll be nice and tanky. Spirit Walk is for moving around the Rift very easy. Piranhas is what we're going to use to kill everything besides our Toad of Hugeness, and we must Piranha the Elites in order to get the objective with the Spider Queen. Horrify is so we can move faster. Soul Harvest is going to give us more intelligence, and it's going to proc our Lakumba's Ornament to keep us alive. 
Big Bad Voodoo. I just took this because there's nothing else to take. I was actually going to recommend taking nothing here, but we might as well take Big Bad Voodoo Rain Dance to give us our mana back so we can keep casting Piranhas. And Hex, we already have the Toad of Hugeness runes, so why, do, why don't we take Jinx to make them take 15% additional damage? Raven Justice, we get 1% of our maximum life and mana and reduce the cooldown of all of our skills by 1 when an enemy dies. Swampland is going to help us stay alive. Jungle Fortitude is going to help us stay alive. And spiritual attunement is going to help us with our mana. So I've taken a very, very defensive setup here. Tune it to whatever works for you, and it's going to be nice and easy. Sacred Harvester, Soul Harvest stacks up to 10 times. The Orc's Crown for more cooldown. And Ring of Royal Grandeur completes our Arashir and our Captain Crimson's sets. Let's jump into the clear and see how we're going to get this down. To find the Arashir set dungeon, go to the Dalgar Oasis in Act 2, and it is way on the left side toward the beginning. It's kind of hard to find, but you just kind of have to search around and you will eventually find it. So, we're going to summon our Hex with our little Toad. We're going to run forward and be very patient. We're going to get our Soul Harvest stacks up. Pretty much just chill, and when we get to an Elite, we're going to put the Piranhas there and let the spider do her thing, and then just summon a toad and let the toad eat everybody. Now you see why I didn't recommend that you take Locust Swarm. I cast Locust Swarm and it wiped out the entire room for me immediately. So I immediately said, I'm done using Locust Swarm. I'm just gonna be nice and calm with my toad of hugeness. So here we are, we've got the piranhas on the elite. The spider comes up and there we go, easy mode. So all I would recommend you do is be very calm, walk around with your toad, and when you get to an elite, when your spider's close to the elite, hit him with the piranhas. That's really all that it takes. So I move to the next pack. I have the toad licking everybody. We've licked 22 enemies so far. I'm making sure to kill every enemy that I walk by because I don't want to have to backtrack here. Here's an elite. Do the piranhas. There comes the spider, no problem. This out of any set dungeon that I've done, and well, I've done them all, is just about being patient. Just walk around with your toad. No problem, we're not in any rush. We will get this down easily and we'll never have to do it again. So here, you might think, well, now that you've killed all the stuff with the toad, why don't you just blast everything with Locust Swarm? If my Locust Swarm goes forward and accidentally kills an elite, well, then I've lost, right? That's why I just take off Locust Swarm, don't even have an attack, just kind of slowly go through because you don't want to accidentally kill an elite. Just use your spider, your toad, and your piranhas to kill stuff, and it should be plenty. Okay, we've got two elites on top of each other. This is a new one, but they should be the last two. Waiting for my spider to get over there. There she is. Hit him with the piranhas. That's why it's nice to have a lot of cooldown. Piranhas again. Got both objectives complete. And now it's just a matter of cleaning up the last 13. And hopefully if you didn't miss any stragglers in the back, you'll have it all down. One left. Please be here so I don't have to go backwards. And we cleared it in plenty of time to spare. No problem. Now let's look at the Zuni Masa set dungeon, which to me is kind of fun. Uh, and it's really pretty easy. The first thing we need to do is we need to hit 150 enemies with our graspy hands. So you don't have to kill them, you just have to hit them with it. So Unbreakable Grasp on graspy hands is going to remove the mana cost. And Wilkins Reach is going to remove its cooldown. So you can literally spray graspy hands everywhere, hit 150 enemies, and you'll get that down. The second objective is you can't let enemies within melee range for the entire set dungeon. So we're going to take all the pets in the world and stay far back. We're going to slow them with graspy hands. We're going to tell our pets to go forward and shoot poison darts at them. Just go nice and slow and don't let them get close to you and you're going to win quite easily. So we are going to take the full Zuni Masa set, of course, because it's the Zuni Masa set dungeon. So we'll take the helmet, the chest, the gloves, the pants, the ring, with Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube, is going to complete our set. 
the two piece fetish army lasts until they die and the cooldown of fetish army is reduced by 80 percent summon it at the beginning fetish army is going to go buck wild the four piece you and your pets take three percent less damage for every fetish you have alive we're going to have a lot of fetishes so we're going to survive doesn't matter anyway we can't let anything within melee range anyway so um Oh, well, it's nice to know we have it, I guess. And the six-piece enemies hit by your mana spenders take 15,000% more damage from your pets for eight seconds. All we're going to do, summon a bunch of pets everywhere, graspy hands everybody, let our pets kill everything, and we're going to shoot uh, poison darts at them. We'll take Ingeom, like in every single other set dungeon. We're going for cooldown and, and attack speed, all that good stuff. So we'll go for Ingeom to reset our cooldowns when we kill an elite. We already talked about Wilkins Reach. You really must have this. It just resets the cooldown on Grass for the Dead, so you can just spray it everywhere. We're going to take two more sets. Why not? We'll take Captain Crimson's. We'll craft the boots and the belt for more cooldown, resource cost, and damage. We'll also craft the bracers and the shoulders for Awe Guilds so we can deal more damage and kill the elites easier. Normally, we would take Lakumba's bracers, which is going to help us when we use Soul Harvest. But we're not going to take Soul Harvest because we can't go within within melee range of monsters and we're not going to take Sacred Harvester. So Sacred Harvester is out, Soul Harvest is out, and Lakumba's is out. So we might as well take all guilds. Short Man's Finger Gargantuan instead summons three smaller Gargantuans and each have their damage increased by 650%. We're going to have pets everywhere. We'll take Zay's Stone of Vengeance, that way we can attack at range and get the damage bonus that way. We will take Enforcer in our Zuni Moss's Ring, it's going to make our pets deal more damage. That's exactly what we want. For the Amulet, you can really take anything. I like Flavor of Time because it has four stats and it automatically comes with cooldown. We'll take the Gogok for the increased cooldown and the attack speed. Spirit Walk Severance is to move around easier. Summon zombie dogs. I mean, let's pick a let's pick a uh, rune here. Poison. The rest of our stuff is poison. Let's take the poison rune. It's not gonna matter. Matt, just pick one of the runes. It's not gonna be a big deal. Gargantuan humongoid is gonna smash everything. Fetish army legion of daggers. Legion of daggers is gonna give us more fetishes, and they're just gonna stab everything for us. Poison Dart Splinters is going to spray Poison Darts everywhere, help us kill everything. And Graspy Hands is needed to complete the objective, spray it everywhere. Graven Justice is going to give us more life and mana and reduce the cooldown of all of our skills by one when an enemy dies. It's going to be lots of death, it's going to reset everything for us. Fetish Sycophants, when we hit enemies with our spells, we have a 15% chance to summon more fetishes. I mean, we need as many as we can get to keep them out of melee range for us. Fierce Loyalty, when you have a Gargantuan, a Zombie Dog, or a Fetish Summoned, your movement speed is increased. And we can have an additional Zombie Dog. That can't be a bad thing. And Midnight Feast, the damage of your Zombie Dogs and Gargantuan is increased by 50%. You can play with these passives. It doesn't make a huge difference. This set dungeon is quite easy. I like Dagger of Darts here. Our Poison Darts and our Fetish's Poison Darts now pierce and deal more damage. So we can just kill everything very easily. Mask of Jerem for 200% increased damage for our pets. And Rain of Royal Grandeur, we're getting mega value here, completes our Zuni Masas and our Captain Crimsons and our All Guild sets. Let me take into the clear and show you how to get this down. To find Zuni's set dungeon, port to the core of Ariet in Act 3, hug the left side, and about halfway through, you will find it. So, in this set dungeon, it's easy. Spray graspy hands everywhere and hit all of the enemies with it. We gotta hit 150 of them. Summon all of your pets and just shoot poison darts. That's it. So we're just putting our beautiful little purple graspy hands everywhere and just making sure that nothing gets too close to us. Whoa there, whoa there. It's pretty forgiving on the melee range. Like if they aren't giving you a hug, it's going to not count it. So that's good. But we're just gonna stay away I guess we could call this the, the coronavirus rift. We're going to practice our social distancing. Just going to let our pets kind of go buck wild and stay kind of far back. And if we need to, throw some poison darts. And that's all there is to it. 
This one's pretty easy. It's kind of just like a stroll through the graveyard. So you can do whatever method you want. You could go around the outside. I'm kind of like mowing the lawn here. Like you go down one end and then you come up the other. Just make sure that you kill all the enemies and you keep throwing your graspy hands everywhere. Let your pets tank for you and just throw some poison darts. And I mean, this is really not too bad at all. So let's see here. We got 93 out of 150. Not bad. There aren't, these enemies aren't too fast. So as long as you don't go incredibly fast, not letting enemies into melee range really shouldn't be that much of an issue. I love all my little friends that are helping me out, but it seems like a lot of times my fetishes are just kind of standing around doing nothing. I wish they had a little bit more of a bloodlust to go in there and really destroy everybody. But, oh well, that's the way that it goes. I tried this with uh, Locust Swarm, but my Witch Doctor was way too strong. Locust Swarm just wiped out the whole rift in the blink of an eye, and I didn't get to graspy hands anybody. But if you wanted to, maybe you could drop one of the skills, like the zombie dogs for like Locust Swarm Pesty, and then use that to just wipe out the entire rift. Might, might be another good option if you are willing to get rid of one of your pets, or you can just go with the full pet build like I did to have more fun. More pets always means more fun. All right, so now all you got to do is systematically kill every monster and not let them in melee range. So it's pretty much our set dungeon to lose at this point. Got 17 monsters left. Trying to figure out where they all are. All right, here they are in that last little pocket. And this one, this one's pretty easy, guys. I think you guys are going to have absolutely no problem getting this one down. Now let's look at the Jade Set Dungeon, which to me is one of the most unique play styles in the entire game. And the Set Dungeon is kind of true to what the Jade Set is trying to have us accomplish. So the first objective is we need to hit 15 enemies with Soul Harvest 10 different times. But when you're playing Jade, Soul Harvest is essentially what detonates the huge bomb. So we're going to apply our Haunt and our Locust Swarm going to gather up a bunch of enemies and then we're going to detonate with soul harvest and the second objective just has to be just happens to be kill 100 enemies affected by haunt and locust swarm so literally the objectives are play jade and that's all you have to do um, the map is kind of big and the pathing uh, takes a little bit to get down and the play style is a little bit unique so probably not the easiest set dungeon but if you've played jade before you'll probably destroy this so to do the jade set dungeon of course we need the full jade set we will take the helmet the shoulders the gloves the chest the pants with ring of royal grandeur and the cube is going to complete our set when haunt lands on an enemy for the two piece already affected by haunt it instantly deals 3,500 seconds worth of haunt damage. So if you haunt, 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 you're going to deal a lot of damage. Four, please. Soul Harvest gains the effect of every rune and has its cooldown reduced by one second every time we cast Haunt and Locust Swarm. Okay, we're going to be casting those a lot. Soul Harvest reduces damage taken by 50% for 12 seconds and consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing 10,000 seconds worth of the remaining damage. So, one issue that you can definitely have in the set dungeon is if you hit too hard. If you apply Locust Swarm and Haunt, and you're getting ready to detonate it with Soul Harvest to complete your first objective, and they all die before you can do that, well, it means that you're not going to complete the set dungeon. So you'll notice on a lot of the pieces, I didn't take the crit crit on the gloves. I have a diamond in my, in my weapon instead of an emerald. I nerfed my damage to about 260,000 sheet damage. And I have taken passives that aren't just going to make you destroy what you're fighting. So play around with that. Don't walk in there with 2,000 Paragon points and maxed gear. You might just kill all the enemies before you can actually do the set dungeon. But as long as you've toned down your damage, it should be absolutely no problem. 
So like with every single set dungeon in the world, we will take as much cooldown and resource cost, all that good stuff, so we can keep casting our abilities at will. For that reason, we'll take the Ingeon. Whenever we kill an elite, it's going to reset all of our cooldowns. Shukrani's Triumph. Spirit Walk lasts until you attack or until an enemy is within 30 yards of you. This is going to be very, very valuable because this is a big map. So we're going to have to go a long ways to kill all of the enemies here. We will craft Captain Crimson's boots and belt at the blacksmith for more cooldown and resource cost reduction. Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac is nice so we can reset our cooldowns and Bane of the Trapped is going to give us more damage. Stone of Jordan is a nice to have. You don't need to have it. It gives you more elite damage and some elemental damage. And we will take Molten Wildebeest Gizzard uh, for some shields and some survivability. You can use whatever amulet you want. I chose Flavor of Time because it has four stats and it always has cooldown reduction on it. We'll take Golgok of Swiftness for the cooldown reduction on the gem. And Lakumba's ornament is very nice. All damage is going to be reduced by 6% for every stack of soul harvest that we have. It's going to keep us alive. Spirit Walk is for moving around. Piranhas is to group up the enemies right before you soul harvest them. Locust Swarm Pestilence, we've got to cast this to get our Jade uh, damages going and to complete the second, second objective. Soul Harvest, Soul to Waste is going to let us move faster and is our detonator. You do that last. You Haunt, you Locust Swarm, you Pyronatal them together, then you Soul Harvest and everything's going to die. Horrify is to move around faster with the Stalker Rune. And Haunt with the Resentful Spirits Rune is going to release two Spirits instead of one. Easy. Grave Injustice, we're going to gain 1% of our maximum life and mana and reduce the cooldown of our skills by one second whenever an enemy dies. We're going to be killing lots of enemies in this set dungeon. Super good passive. Creeping Death, Haunt, Locust Swarm, and the damage amplification from Piranhas last almost forever. Seems like a good passive. We're using all three of those skills. Brush of Essence is going to give us more mana back. And Confidence Ritual is going to give us a little bit more damage. If you... If you find you have too much damage, then don't take Confidence Ritual. Take something else. Take a Survivability Passive. Sacred Harvester. Soul Harvest stacks up to 10 times now. The Orc's Crown for more cooldown. And Ring of Royal Grantor is going to complete both our Jade sets and our Captain Crimson's. Let me take you into the clear and show you how to get this down. To find the Jade set dungeon, take the Gardens of Hope first tier waypoint in Act 4 and walk backwards to the Vestibule of Light. And if you go all the way to the back right corner of the zone, you will find it there. So at the start of the dungeon, run forward and we are going to start haunting and locust swarming everything. When everything is close, Pyronado them and then use your soul harvest. Boom. We harvested 19 souls. We're going to have to hit 15 of those 10 different times. And then make sure to kill the stragglers with a little soul harvest and move forward. So you haunt, you locust swarm, you Pyronado. And then you Soul Harvest. We killed 37 monsters at a time. No problem. Notice how I'm going to the right of the dungeon and I'm going to wipe everything out. After that, I'm going to go to the left side of the dungeon and wipe everything out. And then finally going to the end, leaving no stragglers. I would strongly recommend taking this path to get this set dungeon down because we do have to cover a lot of ground here. So, same story as always. Locust Swarm. Haunt, Pyronado, Soul Harvest. Always that rotation. So we've wiped out the right side. It's time to do the left side. Locust Swarm, Haunt, Pyronado, Detonate. 21 souls harvested. No problem at all. You know the drill by now. Locust Swarm, Haunt, Pyronado, boom, give them the Soul Harvest. That's all there is to it. Jade Set Dungeon is pretty interesting style. It's too bad it's not really a top tier build right now. It's very heavily outclassed by the Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor, but I wouldn't be upset if it made a comeback. And if it did, maybe I might be tempted to roll a Witch Doctor and push it on the leaderboards. We'll have to see. But for now, we're just having fun doing this Set Dungeon. You can see I've already got 9 out of 10 done and we still have 206 monsters left so 
If you practice with this a little bit, it's really not a problem at all. And once you've got everything done, you can be a little more willy-nilly about your attacks. And the second objective is not even worth talking about because the second objective is really just playing the Jade set. I mean, essentially, this set dungeon is just can you use the Jade set? Usually for all the other ones, it introduces some kind of interesting mechanic that they want you to do. Nope, this one should literally just be like, can you play Jade? Question mark. Anyway, we got a lot of snakes over here, and the monster spawns will be a little bit random for you, but it won't be a problem for you as long as you follow that pathing, the right side, then the left side, and then up the middle, because as you can see, the set dungeon is winding around up here, and imagine if you got here, you had one monster left, and it's all the way back in the beginning. It's just going to make you cry. So take your time in the beginning, wipe it all out surgically, and you will have this one down. Now let's look at the final set dungeon for the Witch Doctor, the Helltooth set dungeon. And this one is unfortunately by far the hardest for all the wrong reasons. The first objective is we need to hit 20 enemies with one wall of death four different times. We're going to be doing this map on a little skinny cave that doesn't have very many big open rooms. So it can be quite challenging to get 20 enemies together four different times. And unfortunately, in set dungeons, the monsters aren't fixed where they spawn. It's random. So if you walk in and you don't see any enemies in the first couple of big rooms, I'll just walk out and reset it. And you want all the enemies, all the density in those big rooms so you can get the, those four 20 kill streaks with Wall of Death. The second objective is to take no poison damage. Ta-da! Morrow's Kaleidoscope prevents all poison damage. You will absolutely want this when you try the set dungeon because there is poison damage everywhere. And even the monsters are the accursed. When you kill them, they die and they leave a poison puddle. So you might just accidentally walk over one. Take Amara's when you do the Helltooth set dungeon. Of course, for the set dungeon, we need the full set. We'll take the helmet, the shoulders, the gloves, the chest, the pants with Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube will complete our set for us. Two piece. Enemies hit by our primary skills, and they're all listed there, are afflicted by necrosis. They're going to be slowed, and they're going to take 3,000% weapon damage every second for 10 seconds. The four-piece, after applying necrosis to an enemy, we take 60% reduced damage. It's good. And the six-piece, after casting Wall of Death, we get 17,500% increased damage for all of our primary skills, including, again, on Wall of Death. So besides the allocation of monsters being a problem, another problem is gathering them up. It's sometimes hard to aggro them and get them to follow you. For that, we need to use Locust Swarm Pestilence. This is going to spread everywhere and hit all the monsters and attract them to you. But this gives us another variable we have to solve for. We need to nerf our damage enough so when we cast this skill, it doesn't instantly kill all the monsters. We want Locust Swarm just to attract them, but not kill them. And then we want our Wall of Death to one-shot them. For that reason, I've nerfed my damage to about 260,000 sheet, like we have in a couple of the other set dungeons for the Witch Doctor, because I just don't want to one-shot it with my Locust Swarm. So pay attention to that. That's why you see I didn't take the crit crit on my gloves. That's why I don't have, you know, the super mega Ingeom that's going to do a ton of damage. And that's also why I played it with no Paragon points in the main stat. So, adjust your damage to wherever it's comfortable for you. Locust Swarm should be doing essentially no damage, and Wall of Death should be one-shotting everything. It's what you're going for. Ingeom is nice because it's going to reset all of our cooldowns every time we kill an Elite. Shukrani's Triumph Spirit Walk is going to last until we attack or when there's an enemy within 30 yards of us. This is going to help us not only move around the cave, but at the end of the dungeon, if you accidentally left one monster alive, it's going to give you a chance to find them very quickly. We will craft Captain Crimson's boots and belt at the blacksmith. This is going to give us increased cooldown and resource cost. Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac helps us reset our cooldowns and Bane of the Trapped is for more damage. Stone of Jordan is a nice to have, but you don't need this. You can take whatever ring you want. 
It's nice for the poison elemental damage and the damage against the elites. We'll take Molten Wildebeest Gizzard for the shield to stay alive. Mars Kaleidoscope we talked about earlier is mandatory. It prevents all the poison damage. You will need this. Um, try to get a cooldown roll on it and we'll go with the Gogok of Swiftness for the cooldown and the attack speed and the dodge. Lakumba's Ornament is very nice because it's going to help us stay alive with our Soul Harvest stacks. Spirit Walk is to move around the map. Horrify, this is the wrong, we don't want Frightening Aspect. We would like Stalker so we can move faster. There we go. Locust Swarm Pesty is to aggro everything and bring it to us. Remember, we don't want it to kill the enemies, just want to attract it, then cast a Wall of Death and everything's going to die. Soul Harvest is to give us some more intelligence and it's going to make us move faster and it's going to proc our Lakumba's Ornament. Wall of Death, we need this to kill everything. It's going to make a Ring of Poison. It's going to kill everything and just dance around in the poison and get the monsters to walk across it to kill them. And Piranha's Piranado can be used to group everything into your Wall of Death right before you cast it to make sure you have 20 enemies there. Grave Injustice, we're going to get 1% of our life and mana and reduce the cooldown all of our skills when an enemy dies. It's going to help us spam everything when we need to. Creeping Death, our Haunt, Locust Swarm, and the damage from Piranhas lasts almost forever. Swampland is going to help us stay alive. We're going to have a lot of enemies around us. That with the Maras, with the Lakumba should keep us alive, no problem. And Confidence Ritual, we gain 25% additional damage to enemies within 20 yards. If you're doing too much damage, then feel free to drop this for another survivability passive. Sacred Harvester is nice. Our Soul Harvest will now stack up to 10. Illusory Boots is nice to move through the enemies to make sure you've got 20 exactly where you want them before you cast the Wall of Death. And Ring of Royal Grandeur will complete our Helltooth and our Captain Crimson's set bonuses. Let's jump in and see how to get the hardest Witch Doctor set dungeon down so you can get your Wings of Mastery. Find the Helltooth set dungeon, port to the Royal Crypts in Act 1, and walk all the way to the end right before the Skeleton King, and you will see it. So here we go. I don't have my illusory boots here, so you're going to be a much happier camper than I am. See how my Locust Swarm does not kill them? I gather them up, and then I Wall of Death. Boom, 20 enemies slain. And also notice that I had 20 enemies in that nice beginning room. If you don't have any enemies there, feel free to walk out the door and come right back in and try again. See, this is the problem here. You come to this big open area. I'm checking all the different ways. I'm looking for 20 monsters. Is this 20 monsters? I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to get all of them. So let me move around and Locust Swarm everything. You can see that the monsters drop aggro even with the Locust Swarm. Let's just pray this is enough, but it's... It's just not good enough, so sometimes RNG is not in your favor, and we cannot leave any monsters alive. We've got to clean up the stragglers, otherwise we're going to fail this one. But it looks like here we definitely have enough. This is looking pretty good, if we could get it all into one location. So let's be a little bit greedy. Let's just make sure, oh, okay, okay, there's like 100 monsters here. All right, so this is not going to be bad at all. You can see the Locust Swarm doing its work. And you can see if you did not have a Mars Kaleidoscope, how much poison there is from all of these different monsters. Okay, so let's see here. We've got two out of four. We need two more of these. And it doesn't look like we have enough enemies to finish it off here. And there's not enough enemies here. So you are also on a time limit. So we're going to keep going around the outside and look for a better situation where hopefully we can find 20 monsters. So let's drag these guys up. Okay. Okay, this is looking pretty decent. If I could merge these two packs together, that should be another round of 20. Yep, so just bring them on over here. Uh, the enemies are starting to die from my Locust Swarm. Perfect, we got 20. Okay, we just need one more, and I can see in the bottom right corner, there are 111 monsters left. So first thing, go back and kill the stragglers. Don't want any of these guys alive. We're going to move forward here and see if we can get one more set of 20. Eat, we'll just kill it. Hopefully he walks over the poison ring. Okay. 
Come on over here, my friends. Finally got him. Still haven't killed this guy. Okay, did I get him on the edge there? Finally got him. Okay. Now we're going to keep on going here. We need to find one more. and We've got only got two minutes left. But we need to kind of move here, and hopefully we didn't miss any monsters. This might come down to the wire a little bit. I'm going to keep going around the outside here. And this is just not good enough. It's just not good enough. So I need to kill these guys and move on with my life. Okay, finally got the corrupted angel there. Let's keep going. We got one little straggler there. All right, this might be the start of something if I can bring these guys up these stairs. What do we have over here? Absolutely nothing. Okay, well, I can't waste any time. I got a minute 20. I've got to make another another pack, one more pack of 20 somewhere. Okay. Might be the start of something. It kind of has to be the start of something. All right, there's a couple more. Is that 20? It's going to be pretty close. Let's get it all here. All right, uh, let it rain. Uh, oh, okay, barely. All right, we got 51 seconds to wipe out the monsters. 34 left. Hopefully, they'll all be right here and will be done. Three left, no problem. Oof, there's two left. Uh, I got 33 seconds to find two monsters. Uh, okay, well, 25 seconds left. Well, when we come to this intersection down here, we're going to have to make a choice. Is it up and to the left or down or where did I miss two enemies? I don't know. Let's guess up. Ah, there they are. Finally done. 